All right, so today we're looking at section 4.7, which is dealing with growth and decay. We're going to be looking for different equations of populations that obey the laws of growth and the law of decay. And they should look familiar because we did very similar things in section 4.6, dealing with money instead of bacteria or maybe radioactive decay. So it's this, really the same general concept, just with different substances, really. So here's our formula we'll be looking at and hopefully this looks familiar to you because it's really the same thing we did with continuously compounding um, interest rates and whatnot so here we have a naught that's the same thing as your principal amount so our a naught represents the amount of substance that you have at the beginning of your time period. E, just like we have E in, remember, A parts, as I call it. K is our growth or decay constant. That's going to be the same thing when we're looking at our interest rate. So there's nothing different between those two besides the fact that one is our constant and here we had our interest rate. We have T, which represents time. And this is the amount of substance that we have after the time period, just like we had our amount after a certain time um, when we're looking at the continuously compounding interest rates. We had a final amount. This is our final amount after a certain amount of time. So really the same formula that we've done in section 4.6. If we're looking at uninhibited growth, we'll think of a positive interest rate as going to increase the amount of money you have. That's what, if we have a positive K value, K is our constant, we have a positive K value, we're going to have growth in the substance. If we have decay, we're going to have a negative decay value, negative K constant, and we'll have a decrease in the amount of whatever substance we're looking at. So we'll have growth if we have a positive K value right here, K value, and we'll have decay if it's a negative K value. So pretty straightforward there. So let's first look at the uninhibited growth of cells. This is the formula, the second formula that we have in the textbook. Um, notice that we have a positive K value there. And you're switching up the letters in the notation a little bit. Instead of using A naught, we're going to be using N naught for our original amount. Um, and then N of T for our final amount after a certain time period. So the question from the book states, we have a colony of bacteria and increases over amount of time according to the law of uninhibited growth. So first question A states, if the number of bacteria doubles in three hours, so that's important, we know it doubles in three hours, find K, so that's our unknown that we're trying to find, in equation two, and express n as a function of t. So this gives us a lot of information that allows us to figure out what k is. Let's first understand what it's actually telling us though. We have bacteria that doubles in three hours. So using our formula here, we have n of t equals n naught of times e raised to the k times t. Now what are a few of the pieces of information that we have? Well, we know that our original amount is going to double. So I know that my final amount, so right here, is going to be equal to two, we'll say n t is equal to double our original amount, so two times that. So right away, I can say that 2 times my original amount 
is equal to the original amount, pin naught, times e times my unknown value of k. That's what I don't know, that's what I'm trying to solve for. And then how long does it take to double? What's our time? Well, it's three. So using this information, now I can just start solving for my unknown value. Well, I have a n naught on this side, so I can divide by n naught. What I do one side, I do to the other. Those cancel, those cancel. So I get 2 is equal to e raised to the k times 3. Now remember, I have the exponent of k, and I'm trying to solve for something in the exponent. So I somehow have to bring it down to the base. So in order to do that, I need to get rid of e. And hopefully you guys remember that the easiest way to do that is just take the natural log of both sides because the natural log is really log base of e. And if you have log base e of e, whatever's in the exponent drops down. Basically, that cancels and you're left with the exponent. So I'm going to take the natural log of both sides. which means that cancels. I'll come up here to finish. So the natural log cancels out E, and I have natural log of 2 equals 3 times K. And now you can use your calculator to, to take the natural log of um, take the natural log of 2. And that gives you, I'm looking at the, the value. I'm going to get k is equal to, and you're going to divide both sides by 3. So you have the natural log of 2 divided by 3, and that gives you approximately 0 0.2310. So that is the value of k. That's your um, growth constant. But the question did ask us to write the answer as a um, in terms of t, as a function of t. So we can write our final solution as you know, t equals in naught times e raised to the, now we can put our growth constant, which is the 0 0.2310 times t. And that's all, this is all in the exponent. And that is our answer to question A. Now our second question says, question B, how long will it take for the size of the colony to triple? So if we're looking at the size to triple, the size of the colony to triple, we're gonna do the same type of thing. I know that using my formula, E, K, T. Let's start filling what we do know. Now I'm looking for the size to triple, so I'm going to be looking at three times my original amount. So I can plug that in right there, and I get three times my original amount equals the original amount times E. Now I just solved for the growth constant. So I can go ahead and put 0. Point, what is it? 2310 times t. And now we're saying, well, how long will it take to triple? I'm going to be doing the same exact thing I did in the last problem, except I'm solving for t instead of k. I'm solving for the time instead of the um, growth constant. So I'm going to divide both sides by and not. That gives me 3 equals e raised to the 0 0.2310 times t. I'm going to take the natural log of both sides to get rid of the e, and I can bring down the exponents. Which then gives me the natural log of 3 equals 0 0.2310 times t. I'm going to divide both sides by that 0 
two, three, whoa, whoa. wrong pen. 0 0.2310 divided by 0 0.2310. And that gives me a time value after you plug that into your calculator. That gives me approximately 4.756 hours. So that's how long it will take for the population to triple in size. Now the last question says, so our last question says, how long will it take for the population to double a second time? That has increased four times. Well, if the number of bacteria doubles in three hours, it will double again in six hours. Basically, the idea is that if you take your original population, it takes three hours to get the first one. It's going to have to do that, double that. So it's going to take, if it took the original one, three hours it's going to take to get to a total of um, four times the original amount. Three hours and three hours for a total of six hours. And it's kind of a general idea. Now let's go ahead and look at the decay. And this is used a lot in um, carbon dating and half-life. You'll be given a half-life and you can figure out how old something is or when an organism died really. That's what you usually use carbon-14 for is they have a certain amount of carbon-14 left and you know that the half-life is 5,600 years or whatever it is, um, maybe 5,700, and you can then work backwards to basically figure out when the organism died. So looking at radioactive decay, notice that we have a constant that is less than zero, it's a negative value. Really the same thing that we did before, same idea, but now we're going to be looking at um, having the half-life and using that to work backwards to find time. So the idea of half-life, what exactly is half-life? The idea is that if you have um, a certain amount of the uh, carbon-14, how long, how long does it take for half of it to disappear, to go away. Um, and then however long that is, that's the, what we call the half-life. So the example here, we're saying a paleontologist uncovers a fossil of a saber-toothed cat in California. He analyzes the fossil and concludes that the specimen contains 15% of its original carbon-14. Carbon-14 has a half-life of the 57 30, 5,730 years. So use the carbon-14 dating to determine the age of the fossil. So the very first thing we need to do is find the decay constant for carbon-14. So using our original formula, we have A of T equals A naught E raised to the KT. Well, this is going to be half my original amount because it's the half-life. We have the half-life. So what I can do is say, in order to find the decay constant, we'll say one half of our original amount equals the original amount times E raised to the K. And our time it takes 5,730 years to get half of the material. So our time is 5730. Now, the textbook might use the 5600. Um, that's totally okay. It's just I'm using a different example, and they're using 5,730 years. So from here, it's the same thing that we did prior. Divide by our original amount. That gives us one half 
equals, those cancel, e raised to the k times 5, 7, 3, 0. I need to take the natural log of both sides. That allows me to get rid of e and only work, bring the exponent down. Come over here to finish. So then I have the natural log of 1 half equals 5, 7, 3, 0 times k. I'm going to divide both sides by 5, 7, 3, 0. And I get k is equal to the natural log of 1 half, or 0.5, divided by 5, 7, 3, 0. And then once I plug that into your calculator, you get negative 0 0.00012 as your decay constant. So using that, since my decay constant was approximately negative 0 0.00012, I can write the equation of the equation for the decay population um, as we have a certain amount of carbon 14 in this case. After a certain amount of time, you take the original, A naught. We take E raised to the negative 0, 0, 0, 1, 2 times T. So that is the equation for decay. So we found the decay constant, we have the equation, now we can actually solve for t. Because the question says, he analyzes the fossil and it concludes that the specimen contains 15% of the original carbon-14. So if it contains 15% of the original, how old is the fossil, what's the age? So using our formula, finding the um, decay constant, we can say that, well, if we have 15% of the original amount of carbon-14, well, if we're looking at 100%, let's convert to a decimal, our original amount, we have 100% or just one, that's my starting amount, and I have 15% after a certain amount of time, converting that to a decimal, I get 0.15, so that's my amount of carbon-14 after a certain amount of time, times e raised to the negative point zero 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 one two. Now let's go ahead and solve for t. Doing the same process, let's take the natural log of both sides. I can forget about the one. My e and natural log cancel each other out, and then I have natural log of 0.15 equals negative 0 0.00012 times t, dividing both sides by negative 0 0.0012, and I get my time is approximately equal to, again, use your calculator, And that should give you approximately 15,809 years. So using the carbon-14 data method, it would say that the fossil is 15,800 years old. Now, do you agree? It's, you know, this is math class. I'm not going to get into that. <laughs> so that's the half-life using our decay formula. And, um, yeah, that's about it. If you guys have any questions, feel free to email me or uh, talk to me on Zoom. All right, talk to you soon.